Stella's birthday, 1720. All travelers at first incline, where'er they see the fairest sign, and if they find the chamber neat, and like the liquor and the meat, will call again and recommend the angel inn to every friend. What though the painting grows decayed, the house will never lose its trade. Nay, though the treacherous tapster Thomas hangs a new angel two doors from us, as fine as Dauber's hands can make it, in hopes that strangers may mistake it, we think it both a shame and sin to quit the true old angel in. Now this is Stella's case in fact. An angel's face a little cracked. Could poets or could painters fix how angels look at thirty-six? This drew us in at first to find in such a form an angel's mind, and every virtue now supplies the fainting rays of Stella's eyes. See at her levy crowding swains whom Stella freely entertains, with breeding, humor, wit, and sense, and puts them to but small expense, their mind so plentiful fills, and makes such reasonable bills, so little gets for what she gives, we really wonder how she lives, and had her stock been less, no doubt, she must have long ago run out. Then who can think will quit the place when Dal hangs out a newer face, or stop and light at Chloe's head, with scraps and leavings to be fed? Then Chloe still go on to prate of thirty-six and thirty-eight. Pursue your trade of scandal-picking your hints that Stella is no chicken, your innuendos when you tell us that Stella loves to talk with fellows, and let me warn you to believe a truth, for with your soul should grieve, that should you live to see the day when Stella locks must all be grey, when age must print a furrowed trace on every feature on her face, that you and all your senseless tribe could art or time or nature bribe to make you look like beauty's queen and hold forever at fifteen. No bloom of youth can ever blind the cracks and wrinkles of your mind. All men of sense will pass your door and crowd to Stella's at fourscore.